Yes, people, Killer Keller here, Arts Arcade, Piccadilly Circus for Keller Vision. This is the Street Culture Podcast. This is where we talk to special guests that began their careers in street culture and then went on to global phenomenal success. We've got a very special guest inside the place today, UK hip-hop veteran, part of Poisonous Poets, originally now with his new album release. Not only is he a comedian that carved his lane into acting, working alongside the likes of Ricky Gervais in The Office, Star Wars, Paris. Paramount, you name it, he's been all over it. This is Ben Bailey Smith, aka Doc Brown. Ben Bailey Smith, Doc Brown. What's going on? How are you? I'm good, man. I was just saying to you, like, off air, just like still riding the wave of the launch party a couple of nights ago for this album, Do More, Say Less. It was, it had that vibe of like a birthday party. Mm. Um, you know, walking through the crowd on the way up to the stage, seeing people from every era of my life, from pre-hip-hop all the way through to to now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, school, college, uni, work, and then obviously, like, hip-hop, and then and everything beyond and in between, mm. including family. So it was, like, it was really strange, actually, because I knew I wanted them... Um, Tony Bones, who's produced the whole album, to be up on stage starting, the, getting the first track going. And, Big up, Tony. Yeah, and our saxophonist, Jackson B. I knew I wanted them to kick it off and then I'd jump on and, you know, get a big cheer or whatever. But mm. as I walked through the crowd and saw all these people, I just, I couldn't get on stage. No, I had no. to stop and say hello. So it was like a really weirdly emotional, it's a bit like the end of a show at the start of the show. Wow. It was really emotional yeah. walking through and... By the time I got to the stage, the first song came to an end and it was just perfect timing, perfect vibe. And I knew in that moment, because mm. I was nervous beforehand, mm -hmm. but in that moment I was like, this is going to be You were in good company, so it's just amazing. a breeze. Yeah. Oh, I loved that. It was well, really special. I, I was very privileged to have been there as well. Yeah, thank you for Which coming, is awesome. Man. And uh, familiar faces all round. The sense I definitely got was not only um, a long-awaited musical project to land mm. with you but also the ideas you were saying that it was it was very very family family in orientated yeah you know i wanted to make some hard music because that's what for me that's what rap should be rap should always be hard you should have these cold hard moments mm. um but at the same time to be in like my mid 40s and and come back after everything i've been through and everything i've mm. done i couldn't treat it like uh, I don't know, just like a standard comeback or even like a debut record or anything like that. It had to had to somehow reflect where I'm at in mm. a very real sense. So the best way to present it is is live in a way, even though it's, I think it's a great album to listen to, but the best way to present it for me was was live because I could show you that the music is serious, but I can't be that serious about it in the moment because of who I am and where I've come from. I'm mm -hmm. not, you know, I'm not a kid who's just burst onto the scene. No, no, so no, no, I get you. I wanted to reflect all of that and still make sure that the music st stood up with anything that's coming out right now. It's interesting because, f for one, one of my favourite uh, accompaniments of that performance was the saxophonist. Yeah. And the fact vibe, that right? Tony... And, yeah, and they were all backing you up with the vocals. Mm. It felt really like that, that, that kind of energy. Um... And sometimes that, because it's almost a given, particularly for our ages, mm. what we know the value of live music to be, it's almost, it, it is a given, it's for, taken for granted and you don't realise how much work and thought goes into Absolutely, to it. absolutely. It, it, nothing does my nut like an, uh, uh, an ill thought out or just an unthought out rap mm. show. Because mm. the thing about rap is, of course, by its very nature, it's very DIY. Mm -hmm. So we get into it because we don't come from money, so we can't afford a saxophone necessarily. <laughs> we can't afford music lessons. You maybe can't even afford DJ equipment, so you beatbox, you know? Mm -hmm. you, you can do these things for free. That's why we do them. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that w once you start to create a following or a platform for yourself, it should still be this, like, mm. low-budget mm. Thing like regressing with where the yeah, way everyone else regresses. There's levels to it. Yeah. So it always I always get upset when oh, so I can see a breaker like spin it back <laughs> spinning out there. Because these circles. Oh, so okay, bring it um, in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it always upsets me when I see like okay the rappers 
there and he, he's good, she's good, whatever, but they've just got like a guy to press ooh, play. Ooh, ooh. Like they don't even know the dude. Like PA style. Yeah, dude doesn't really care about the music yeah. and there's no connection, you know? And for me, it was like the people that you see on stage are invested in mm -hmm. every moment of every song mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. That that's how I wanted it to be. It felt like that. Yeah, it it's really like did. when I did the the publishing splits. Um, I just said to Tony, it's 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 fifty fifty, and he just wouldn't have it. So it ended up being sixty forty in my favor because of him. But I was like, it's fifty fifty because the music. Number one, the music is the thing that drove me to to write all this mm, stuff mm. and make it as good as I think it is. But number two, I feel like when you collaborate, the more that people are sort of invested, even mathematically, financially from the start, the, the more they're going to be alongside you all the, all the way. It's, it's, an, it's an emotional investment. I'm so used to, mm. like, from the 10 years of stand-up, think it's just all me, it's all on my shoulders. Mm. And it's great in terms of, okay, you can say and do whatever you want. And you can enjoy the spoils, mm -hmm. but you enjoy the spoils alone. And when it goes badly, you experience that alone. Quite as well. solid, solitary yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You create it alone. Yeah. You perform it alone. You travel to the gig alone. Mm. You perform it alone. Then you kill or you die on your mm -hmm. own. You may have a kinship with the beatboxing and comedian performance because that, that comedy performance and the beatboxing and you go on there. If you make people laugh, if you don't, you, this is a singular game. Absolutely, the reaction is everything. Yeah. in that moment and. And you really carry it with you as a performer, you know, like we, we talk about being thick skinned and we have to have a certain level of confidence to get up there on stage and mm. do what we do. However, you know, at the end of the day is us on our own going back home feeling like, you know, it didn't really work. I could feel it. People were bored. There was a lull, mm -hmm. you know, or in comedy, it's just like they didn't laugh and yeah. it's painful. And wow. who are you going to call? You're going to yeah, call, yeah. call your mum, you're going to call your friends. Like, people have got lives to live. They don't mm. want to hear about y your gig going badly or go all going well. Like, you killed it. You absolutely killed it. What, are you going to phone everyone? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, Mate, yeah. you weren't there, yeah, but yeah. I was like a god tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was no, they don't hear the bad news, don't they, really? Do you know what I mean? So it's like the beautiful part of it for me was that it was a collaborative experience. And it's like if people don't like it, then... You know, I can sit with Tony and Jackson. We we'll mm. we'll, we'll, we'll have to agree, like it didn't work. But hey, we mm. think it's good, mm -hmm. and you feel sort of good about yourself. And then if they do like it, you've got people to share that moment with. Oh, yeah. So yeah, for me, it's like it's very emotional mm. in all the best ways. That band formation, mm. uh, and as, you know, you do become so dependent on your own your own drive. It's nice to have a team, a collective, a delegation of sharing tasks, jobs. I mean, you've moved into a lot of different areas. I mean, mm. this, music is just one lane. You've got the agency production house and management. You've got, you know, the comedy side of things. You've got your script writing. Like, and each one of these has a separate, s s separate teams with separate delegations. Absolutely. How do you manage that, Ben? How? Sometimes I don't manage <coughs> or I don't manage it well because I'm not really a boss. Like, I... I am a boss, technically. I run my own company and I move like a boss and, and I hire a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But I'm not really a, a manager manager. I'm not really a boss boss. I'm not going to be like barking orders. Everything is always going to be like, how do you feel about doing mm -hmm. this? Are you up for this? Are you up for that? You know? Uh, and sure, invoice me <laughs> at the end of the day, but like, I'm not really a guy like shouting and wagging my finger and forcing people to do stuff. Um, and maybe I'd be a much wealthier man if I, I was that way. But I think for me, it's like, it's all energy based. So to the outsider, it appears that I'm doing a million things at once. Mm -hmm. It's never, ever true. I, I'm doing one thing at once. The, the, the more, literally the morning after the album launch. So this would have been yesterday morning. I was in my office in Soho meeting with an author who's a, 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 a become a dear friend of mine and we're adapting uh, an, a novel that he he brought out about seven or eight years ago it's a big hit novel sh shortlisted for the book of prize and everything wow and, uh, <laughs> we're adapting that into a tv series really? i was literally like i was telling him the whole time because he was like where are we at with this where are we at because we were planning it developing so i was like i just i can't think about it because you're just, just yeah, still literally tomorrow we'll we'll sit down and we'll start talking seriously about wow. it. But until the last bar is performed, 
of that album, yeah. I can't even think yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I cannot do more than one thing at once. But I, I get that from the outside looking, it looks like I am because, I, you know, an album might drop the same time they reissue a piece of classic comedy and there's a new TV mm -hmm. series I'm mm -hmm. in. But all of these things are created at completely different times. Yes, yeah, you're right. Very, very separately. But in the case of an album where you've got to have that, you know, the well has got to fill to a point where you've got that creative. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a long period of time. How you? Do, how did you do that whilst so, doing other creative things? So that things? was stressful at times. You <laughs> yeah, know, because, can imagine. Um, so when me and Tony started working together, I just finished shooting Black Mirror, and I thought this other thing was gonna pop off and it didn't. Like I, th I thought I was gonna get a role in this thing and it didn't happen. Um, and then I found myself sitting around. So, you know, I contacted Tony, we made one song and he was itching to do more. And I was very much like, I don't know if I'm gonna have time to do anything more than this, but let's see what happens. And then it started to become this prolific relationship. We were writing like a song a day and we suddenly had all these songs. Boy. And he was like, let's just make an album. And the whole time I was just like, Oh, I just don't know. And then sure enough, I got a role in this uh, Paramount thing, a Paramount Plus thriller um, called Little Disasters. And it was shooting out in um, Budapest. And so now the clock was ticking. I was like, I've got to go on the, th the, the 1st of July. I'm out. And then I'm, I'm done until September uh, or end of September. So like, wow. we've got to have this album finished before I leave because I can't, start shooting this thing knowing that that's in the back and of the mind. album's not yeah. done and i've got to think about rap and sta and um acting i just uh, learning lines and learning bars i just i can't do nah. it so nah, we nah, were nah. like full steam ahead and we got it done in time and ironically we got it done i took my kids i, I, I developed a my kids had grown up going to glastonbury because i always did stand up there and now they're both young women 19 and 16. Uh, 12 and under, you can take your kid for free mm -hmm. to Glastonbury. Um, after that, they got to have a ticket. And I only ever get like one guest. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> I don't like know if I can do it this year. Yeah. And they were like, well, <clears throat> can't you just like create a show that we're in? I was like, fucking hell, all right, Jesus. So I created like a, a family comedy show, like a kid's comedy show that they are in and performed it uh, on the kids stage at Glastonbury no just to get way. them tickets. Yeah. That's incredible. What, so, <laughs> see, in, that's how you do it, you see. <laughs> so yeah. I was performing this this children's comedy show with my daughters on the 30th. On the 1st, the morning of the 1st, I drove them back to London, then went to the airport, flew to Budapest, shot this thing, wrapped it up in September, came back to Tony, let's mix this album, get it mastered, and, and work out how to get it out there. Wow. And, I, and I still I was like... I don't know what my next job will be, so let's let's yeah, crack yeah. on with this. And the reason that me and part of the reason me and Tony work well together is because he's up for that. Like he doesn't mind that stress. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't mind that. Like he's here's resilient. a deadline. We he gotta go. It, we yeah. gotta go. He's quick and he's determined. Um, so it made it easier for me. But I guess the short answer to your, to your question is it is hard to manage mm. sometimes. And I, the only time I get really stressed is when it. I get the timing slightly wrong and two things cross over. Yeah. It really just freaks me out. Yeah, it becomes yeah. like patting your head and rubbing your belly. I'm just like, I'm, I'm freaking out over here. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But also a lot of things are internalised, like you were saying about r learning scripts mm. to learning bars mm. to mixing this mm. to be getting a booking and having to fly to Budapest. Mm. I mean, these are all like, these, this, this is enough for the... It's such a buzzword, but you know, your own mental health, the internalizing of trying to figure yeah. shit out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes I I feel really unmoored and anxious. Like, I don't know, like a, a couple weeks before the launch, I really was feeling like this just feels nuts yeah. because rap music, I mean, I am hip hop. I'm from hip hop. Rap music is is my absolute first love. It's never made me any money. Mm. It's never made a living for me. It's never paid for my kids' food. It's never paid for a house. It's never paid for anything. If anything, it's cost me money and time <laughs> over the years. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Just being real. And it, there was a point a couple of weeks before the launch where I was just like, <clears throat> what the fuck am I doing, man? That yeah. I need to just, like, this is just I'm ridiculous. not 23 no yeah. more. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Yeah. I need to, like, go out there and find out when the next TV show I'm making is. Like, mm. I need to get this money and I need to 
the, the job that actually pays me, I need to like give it more respect, take it more seriously. My missus was like, just calm down, you know, but I was like on edge, mm. do you know what I mean? I was like, this is, I'm, I'm wasting time. Yeah, yeah. And of course, when you get to our age, time becomes way more precious it's than money. It's so funny you say that because money, it's sex, so true, man. power, all of the things that and people And all of this covet. is kind of like a play, but it's play, but and you, then you start questioning yourself of like, well, where's the responsible thing I should be doing? Yeah. <laughs> Almost, right? Like, this is a joke. I'm like, my, my daughter was at university in, in Liverpool, you know, and like, she'll just like text me, oh, I need two grand for the uh, next term of accommodation. You know, and I'm just like, why the fuck am I rapping like right now? I like to, I've, got, I've got responsibilities, <laughs> yeah, yeah. man. This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So it's like really messing with my mind. And then, yeah, stepped on stage and was like, it all makes sense. Mm. Like, I have to set rap aside from everything else. I need rap to connect me to my soul as an artist. It's, mm. it's, I can't put it in the same bracket as writing this advert or like acting in this movie or this TV show or, or doing an hour of stand up. It's not in the same bracket because mm. when I rap, it's not like uh, Gets rapping. It's not like no. Bashy rapping. It's, it's not like any of these guys rapping because when they rap, the money is rolling in, the streams are, it's just not, that's, mm -hmm. it's not a viable business for mm -hmm. me. So I have to, I have to have this relationship with it as like, don't worry. And again, it was my missus, she was like, why are you doing it? And I was mm -hmm. like, because it's fun, it's my love thing. She's like, so why aren't you in love? Why aren't you having fun? <laughs> like, focus on, like, uh. you, if you're doing it for the love, enjoy it. Mm -hmm. If you really don't enjoy it, just don't fucking do it, walk away. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna walk away. Yeah. I love it too much. Exactly. So enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. And that's what it's that's what it's there for. Rap is there to remind me where I came from, how hard it was to be an entertainer, mm. how hard it was to get into show business. And it's to remind me who my real friends are as well. Mm, mm. You know, the people that gave me such affirmation on that night, people mm. that I look up to. Even like I came home and I was still getting messages. I was just about to go to sleep. I was like wired. Mm. So it was like three in the morning. I couldn't sleep. So I was like replying to messages. It's the best like, shit ever. Yeah. Best shit ever. And I got a text from Shorty Blitz and it was just an audio message. And, he, and it was, he was just apologizing. He was like, you know what, something came up. I couldn't make it. I'm so sorry. But he goes, I know, I know you would have killed it because you're a king and that's what kings do. You know? <laughs> like you're a legend out here and you always will be. And it's <laughs> like, I... I used to listen to Shorty Blitz on the radio, like, in my mind, he was like DJ Premier. He's yeah. like an untouchable, unapproachable guy that doesn't really exist in real yeah, life. Yeah. He's like a magical dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, do you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? He's out there. That's how I saw him. With you. <laughs> and, you know, I just got that message and I was like, this is it. This is what it's all about. Mm. This is my payment. Mm. Do you know what I mean? 100%. You, did, you, you manage things with such a level of humility. Do your, uh, your approach to the craft as well. Um, just to add value to what you're saying, I also feel like you, we, it has to be part of as much as going to the gym is. Mm. Mainly because you need that space to play because everything else is regimented. You may have mm -hmm. a bit of creative space to do script writing, acting, etc. But if you take it back to that source, that's the... That's the fundamental, that's, that's 101, that's poof, ground zero. Absolutely. And not a lot of people have that, which is actually scary when I think about it. I'm like, what, you don't, what, do, you, what do you have? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have that, what, what yeah. is it? I mean, like, if I'm not acting, uh, like, you know, for a living, I'm, I have to admit, I'm not, like, out there every day just learning a soliloquy or mm -hmm. learning a monologue and just walking around going, I'll just do some acting mm -hmm. in my spare time. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I just, I don't do it. Maybe I should. But I, I don't. Whereas with with rap, it's like, I'm never not, there's never not a rhyme in my head, like mm. just rolling around somewhere or just freestyling to myself mm. or just rap. It's just, it's so ingrained, do you know what I mean? Mm. In, in, I guess, who I am and, and, and where I'm from. So 
yeah, it is. It's, I, once I realised I I'm going to put this album out, it's like, oh, I need to get back into the gym. I need to get back into the... Mm. And I, I must state that's a metaphor. I do not yeah, go yeah. gym. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I need to get back into the sort of the, the rap Olympics of, in my head. Like, I need to rap again. I need to, like, have verses, like, ready to go. I yeah. need to, like, get back in that zone. And I, I have to say, I did find that... I found it really enjoyable yeah. doing that. Um, but, yeah, to get match fit for the show dude like i had to be rapping like every day again, yeah which i hadn't done for 20 years yeah yeah yeah. that's it's like the wrestler going back into the ring yeah. because you know that you know that you know the um nuances you understand the theory you've got all of it you it's almost impossible for you to you you embody it mm. that's the one thing i get about doc brown is like you've always you're you're the embodiment of and there's only very few people, mainly because you're always there at every juncture. I would argue that you're more hip hop than anything, <laughs> anything that you've, you know, you've carved a success in because of because of your resilience, your your attack, your behaviour. Every, in fact, your behaviour as a as a, a overall entertainer, it resonates hip hop. I'm glad because hip hop was the reason that I became successful quite quickly uh, as I crossed over. Um, into comedy because I, I, I was rapping almost <coughs> right up to when I started doing comedy. But again, like I say, not for any money. I did it for fun because it just didn't make me money. So mm. I was I was a youth worker for a living, rapped at night, had fun times and all of that, had my moments, but you know, never even came close to making a living. But when I went into stand up and you know, Bear in mind, like the first few gigs, you might get paid 20 quid. Mm. You gotta get to Newcastle and mm. back. Mm -hmm. You're gonna drive there and drive back in the same night. You're probably gonna have to get a hotel. So you get a hostel or hotel, might cost you 50, 60, 70 quid, maybe even 100 quid. Mm -hmm. Petrol, 100 quid, you're getting paid 20 cash. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I was like, this is a hustle and yeah. it, I can't do it on this level. I need to switch up the game mm. ASAP. And hip hop taught me everything I knew. So, like, I'd be in green rooms and there'd be these comics sat around going, oh yeah, these guys, they never pay. Like they take like, I'm still waiting on a, a check from like last year. And I'd be sat there going, what the fuck yeah, are you yeah. lot talking about, man? Yeah, yeah. And they're joking about it. I was like, well, they don't pay you straight away. Oh no, no, that's the thing. I was like, but you've done the work. And I was like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, you know, that's just the way it is. And I was like, no, no, my book, okay. not where I'm from. <laughs> And like, I remember, I won't name the company, but they're a very, very major <laughs> uh, comedy and, and TV company now. And um, I was like, what the fuck? They're not paying me. Like, I, I, I left the venue as soon as business hours started the next day, like 9 a.m. I was on the phone to them. I was like, where's my money from last <laughs> night? And the next day, a check arrived in the mail. And I was like, it's bullshit. Like, wow. it's just... People being too polite to yeah. ask for money or too scared yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm from hip hop. Like, I, I bet I have half the cash before I'm on the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's even if the the fee is fifty pound, I want my twenty five pound. That's right. Do you know what I mean? Standard. Because it's where we come from. So like that hustle, it became like people started to know in the comedy game. Like, oh, you got to give Doc his money. Like he's not he's not joking. Like, Changing the nuances, the behavior of the, yeah. The... I'm like, bro, I'm joking on stage, not about my money. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it became quite quick. Like people were like, no, you got to pay Doc, and you got to give him a decent fee. Like, mm. and because I was doing something that no one had seen before, which was rapping, not parody, like rapping well, mm -hmm. but rapping jokes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I moved up the pecking order real quick. And within nine months, I was headlining. I remember like I was doing a competition called The Laughing Horse and I got knocked out in like the quarterfinal or something. I was leaving this little shithole in Soho and I bumped into Michael McIntyre, who I'd gig gigged with a couple times at some mm -hmm. small venues. He was already quite big, um, not like gigantic as he is now, but he was already like, you know, mm -hmm. doing bits of TV and stuff like that. And he's like, how's it going? I was like, oh, I've just been doing this shitty little um, comedy competition thing. And he's like, yeah, you know, it's hard starting out. You know, have, have you um, have you tried speaking to anyone at Jonglers? Because, you know, you could get open spots there. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I do weekends at Jonglers. And he was like, we, we, you do the full weekend? I was like, yeah, yeah, I do the Thursday. I double up on the Friday and Saturdays and stuff. And he's like, how long have you been going again? I was like, nine months. He was like, dude, it took me like three years to get into Jonglers. Wow. And I was like, 
ah, I don't know, I just guess I'm doing something different. And he ended up, he gave me a lift home because uh, at the time I was living in Hackney near his sister. And like, I just remember him like, the bleep, bleep, off Oxford Street. He had like the, the Porsche Jeep and shit. I was just sitting in the Porsche Jeep. Jeez. And he's just telling me like comedy stories and stuff. And I was like, I'm going to be as big as Michael McIntyre mm -hmm. in less time. Like mm -hmm. I just had, the, and again, it was that hip hop sensibility. Whereas like, in all other art forms, it's not cool to say, it's definitely not accepted to say, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm the best actor in the world. Mm -mm. I'm the best actor in the world, hire me. Mm. Whereas in hip hop, like, we say that because we come from nothing. Desire. Yeah, we yeah. come from nothing. So it's like, I'm going to be the best. Mm. And we're naturally competitive. Yeah. And we can sit next to another guy who says, no, I'm going to be the best. And mm. like, we respect yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, okay, like, go for it. I still feel that I'm going to be the yeah, best, yeah. but it's fine. Like, and we're all striving to be the Just number one guy. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and we can have a beer afterwards. And yeah, yeah. You people, know. Yeah. people from outside take it as like, oh, I hate rap guys. They all think they're the fucking man. They all think they're the woman. They think they're the best person. It's like, no, that's our way of affirmation. Yes. Because we right. come from a place where everybody told us we weren't shit. Yeah, that's right. Everybody. Yeah. And that we're not going to amount to anything. So yeah. we tell ourselves we're going. Even if deep down we don't really believe it, it's fine. And we can sit next to another dude who says, no, I'm the best. Mm -hmm. And it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah outside, yeah. they can't understand that. Yeah. And um, that's the same reason why those comedians wait in a year to get paid. Because even though deep, deep down, they think they're the best, they don't know how to express it. They don't know how to say it. Who's the, who's the comparable? Who's the close comparable to yourself where in the, where you definitely thought to yourself, wow, he's got, the, he's got that hip hop competitive spirit as a comedian? In comedy? Yeah. I mean, Romesh is kind of hip hop. Um, me and him got on like immediately. Mm -hmm before I knew he knew anything about rap. Mm -hmm. Because we were a similar age, we had young kids, yeah. you know, we both like weren't from money. And in, in, in that world, there's a lot of people who are like, from very wealthy backgrounds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you start to realize, oh, of course they don't mind about getting paid late. Because their parents are bankrolling anyway, yeah. the whole fucking thing anyway, wow. you know? Um, so we, we got on straight away and he definitely had that thing of like, I'm going to the top, I don't care, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Sean Walsh, when I first met him, he was very, like, very driven, very, a lot of belief in himself. And, I like, I elevated to those guys because they reminded me of rap. Like, they were, like, mm -hmm. unashamed about, mm. like, building their talent, building their brand, knowing their worth, getting paid, oh, you know? Dumb people, man. Um, I respect wow. that stuff. Yeah. Like, but, yeah, there's, there, there's not a lot of them in that game. No, I would imagine it's few and far between. Yeah. Mm. And is, is it oversaturated as a as a as an area of work? Yeah, it kind of is. I think there's more comedians now than ever, and like I've been out of it for for so long now. Just, it's been seven years, but even in that time, there's been such a new wave of comedians that I don't know everyone. Mm. Like when I dropped dropped out in 2017, like even as late as like 2020, I still knew everyone mm. in the game. Like I could walk into a comedy club, I know everyone. The biggest guy, the guy you haven't heard yet. You know, the up and comers, mm -hmm. I knew everyone. Now it's like, wow, there's a whole new wave. And I think partly that's the burst of comedy online. So there's a lot of comics who've come up not the way I did yeah. through um, battles, comedy competitions, and open mics, IRL. Uh -huh. they've, they've come up with sketches that they've made for Insta or TikTok, and then they're selling out venues. It's crazy. Just on the TikTok, one video. Crazy. So. Wow. And there's rap rappers who I'm sure have done the same, same thing, thing. Yeah, I like I should feel jealous of them, but I genuinely don't because the education I had in stand up was exactly the yeah. same as the education I had in rap. Yes, ruthless yes. for sure. Ruthless. I was just out there getting eaten, mm. just getting you know beat up, mm. destroyed by more talented people. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. And I had to I had to go home and go. How do I get better? It's the same at this? way with beatboxing. How do I? How do I go home, totally. come back, and make sure this never happens Without again? Without question, they don't have that. They don't get. Whereas if that. you're making a sketch, like I say, no disrespect, and I'm not jealous. I'm. It's amazing that they've come up and they make twenty times as much money as me. But you'd rather be well you. done. You'd rather but be I'd you. I'd still rather be me, and I'm mm. not saying that because oh, I'm like some underground hero. No, I'm saying the education I had is priceless. It, mm. it gives me an inner strength that means I don't actually mind about like how much money or recognition or what. Mm. Real recognize real and people know they can't fuck with me <laughs> because I showed you in real life. 
and you've got they've got learnt experience of yeah, seeing yeah. you or you know experiencing you within the circles yeah, yeah. of such i showed you in the moment mm. when the pressure was at its real highest. time real time <laughs> yeah, when it was at its highest yeah and also like i say what i learned like the feeling of i remember like getting the first rap battle i did at, at mudlands and dingwalls <laughs> like just getting laughed at or booed or whatever brutal the crowd feeling like going home going that can never happen again I just have to work out how. Yeah, yeah. And it was exactly the same in stand-up, like not getting laughed at, jokes falling mm. on their ass, dying on stage. That can never happen again. Oh, man. That just, I just have to find a way of being bulletproof. Mm. And I worked that out on stage, in rap, and then again in stand-up. I didn't, like, go home and go, I'm going to write a little web series where I'm just mm. like, how can you die? Mm. You can't die, like... People might say in the comments, this isn't funny, but you can just gas yourself up and tell yourself that it is. Yeah. Whereas in stand-up, in a rap battle, on a, on a hip-hop stage, on a comedy stage, yeah. it's, it's black and white. Yeah. You're either good or you're not. Yeah. The crowd will tell you. It's fucking true. Like, you and can gas yourself up online to say, I think this is dope. And then you get all these followers, so it seems to validate it. Mm. But you need... I don't think there you is need a need to look in the whites of people's eyes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I that, know when I know when people are not feeling something <laughs> Feel I'm doing. Feel that pain. Yeah. yeah, I know it. Like for me, it might not be about dying necessarily because I I became pretty bulletproof as a stand-up. Similarly with rap, but I can tell like when my shows like yeah. there's a lull, like this bit's not as strong. Yeah, yeah, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I can see it in the whites of yeah, people's yeah. eyes. Their body language. They're like they're politely waiting for the mm. next good bit, but this bit is not that good. Mm -hmm. How can you possibly have that nuance yeah. through a, a screen this size? It's just, it's impossible. Yeah, yeah. And you could call me an old fart. I really don't give a shit. I genuinely don't. I, I love the age I am and what I experienced when I experienced it. And the aggression to, to that, that, the reaction to that, like you say, the whites in our eyes, the, the, the feel of the, the tone, the mm. energy, you mm. know, is, is, and you just fight another day. Yeah. But you've got to build up your skin for that, and a lot of people aren't building up their skin like that. And again, I can trace it all the way back to hip hop. The <clears> fact <throat> that I've had success in copywriting and in, in, in writing adverts um, uh, and writing stuff for the screen, that all comes from the skill I developed IRL of reading a room, mm. knowing what people want in this moment, mm. right? And, and switching my what I planned if I have to to make sure I deliver for them in that moment, because it's mm. a moment. It can either go well or it can fall flat on its face, and I want it to always go well. Therefore, sometimes you've got to switch up the plan. Like, you had a plan in your head, great, but it's like that old saying, like, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Mm. And being on stage sometimes is like getting punched in the face. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah. The thing I thought was going to work great doesn't. Surprise, surprise. Like, not everybody's on your wavelength. How do you read the room? Some people can't read the room, so they just go, I still think this is an amazing idea. Hmm. I'm just going to plough on. I'm going to yeah, plough no, through. No, yeah. People are like, mm, not, just not feeling it. Read the room. like It becomes this like second nature thing if you do it often enough. And I've done it for so many years now. I can tell when I've got a show that's like, I know it's great, start to finish, but I didn't give this point at 37 minute mark i didn't give it enough energy and that lull was created there and i lost a couple people there and i lost a couple people here the body language has shifted someone's shifting in their seat someone's got their phone out mm. i'm losing them slightly i can see those nuances i can feel them in the moment wow. but it comes with experience yeah and i think the, the the way i got into advertising is it's not coincidental because i reckon in in the world of stand up mm -hmm and let to a lesser extent in rap, you would have ad execs, of course you would, sat in the shadows in the back of the club because they're seeing someone get a point across to a thousand strangers in under 30 seconds. <laughs> Their eyes must be like lighting up like fucking dollar yeah, signs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if you would have been across this, but years ago when I was doing stand-up, a colleague of mine, Mickey Flanagan, um, actually sued WKD for using uh, the, the phrase out, out, which was a bit that he created. Really? It's going out and then there's going out, out. It was a really famous bit wow, of his. Wow, okay. And these 
these guys are so ballsy. They think, yeah, we can. Like, who cares? Who knows who he is? Yeah. But he's shot. He's had the bit filmed, and it's watermarked on the the video. Like, wow. He's got proof of when he wrote it, when he created it. Fuck them right off, you know. But it made total sense to me. Of course, you'd steal something like that. Mm-hmm. It's so clear. It's such a brilliantly clear idea. There's going out, and then there's going out, out. Mm-hmm. Funny concept for a bit that he goes into in more detail. But just that terminology is quirky, it's funny, and it's instantly relatable, which is exactly what you need for adverts. Yeah. You haven't got much time. The one slogan that yeah. epitomizes everything. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So of course they're looking at rappers, of course they're looking at stand-ups. Mm. Because we're the people who distill ideas into the shortest space of time mm. and deliver them to audiences we have not got long to win over. Like a brand mission s- statement. Absolutely. Absolutely. If, you, if you're beatboxing, you're not going to open with like a a bit that's impossible for everyone to get their heads around. And you're going you're to do like an impression of, I don't know, like a combine harvester or something. And people are like, wait, what the fuck is it? You're going to open with your, like something really strong. <clears throat> bang. Everyone's like, how the fuck? What? Mm. This is nuts. Just at one time. And then they're in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. We're not stupid. We're like deep down, we're, we have that talent that mm. ad, ad creatives and ad agency people wish they had. Mm. Which goes back to original conversation about why we return to source, mm. keep the energy, keep the play, the young mind of play yeah. m- moving. Exactly what it is. And, and me and you are very similar in that respect. Like mm. people will say, you know what, Keller looks the same as he did 20 years ago. Doc looks the same as he did 20 years ago. It's, I wish I could say it was like collagen injections or something like that. <laughs> I genuinely believe, and I got this from my mum because my mum is 70 and she looks 40. Wow. <laughs> I genuinely believe it's like, it's not being childish or being creepy and just hanging around with children or something mm. like that. <laughs> it's like tapping into the beauty of your, your youth, like mm. the, the best elements of it yeah. and never giving up on it. So there's elements of my youth that I find so energizing that I'm not going to give up on them. Back Even to though your like, 18 or 19 year old where yeah. you were. Yeah. Some people might say that's embarrassing. Like, why are you still doing that? Yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, I've got friends who are 10 years younger than me who like hit 30 and are just like, well, I can't do that anymore. What mm. that fun thing that you really yeah. loved? Yeah, I can't do that anymore. I've got kids now. Like, I've got, I've got a job, but like, I can't do that fun. But why not? Why are you saying that? Is it because you feel like self-conscious about doing that fun thing? Because don't give a fuck what other people say. If that was fun to you, yeah. crack on. I can't judge and I can't run your life for you, so I've got to respect your decision. But then I see them and fuck, they look 20 years older yeah, than yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. they've just gone, I can't it drops. anymore. They just can't. Drop, yeah, exactly. The and I'm, you telling, drop I'm not boasting. If I stopped tomorrow, I guarantee you I'd look 20 years older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel it, ke- it keeps me mm. energized. Yeah. It's, I, honestly, I think it's as simple as that. And I, like I say, I watch my mum. She's not a rapper or a stand-up or anything like that, but she lives her life just like she did when she, 30 years ago. Mm. Still goes to Rodigan. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Still goes to the <laughs> blues parties. She, she has a drink, go carnival. Like She does all the shit she used to do when she was life younger. Life consistencies. When people hit their pension age, you see a sudden drop in their health. Yeah. Sudden drop in their yeah, yeah. behaviour. Arthritis out of nowhere. Mm. Can't be asked to get out of the, of the sofa. You know, I've le- I've worked all my life. But then, if you're if you're you know, if the creativity is your fountain of youth, as as Rakim would say it. Then then it just should be a consistent thread within. Rakim's a great example. Yeah. Apart from the grey beard, he looks like <laughs> yeah. Rakim from yeah. eighty six. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. You know, another person like is Normski. Normski, another great example. Incredible energy, youthful yeah. energy. And like I say, it's not about like tragically trying to, oh, we just want to be like the kid that I was. No, it's about tapping into the beauty of youth, which is, yeah. uh, you know, being in touch with your playful side, experimenting, mm. not to be childish, to be childlike, to have that wide eyed mm. uh, kind of curiosity, that lust for life, experimentation. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? These are things that children Curiosity do. Curiosity of just everything. Children are just like, what now? Yeah. What can I try? That looks interesting. Let me yeah. try that. Adults are like, you don't want to do that. Shit. Like, <laughs> have you tried it? Nah, but it's shit. Like, how many people have you spoken to? Like, uh, have you watched this film? Ah, uh, nah, I, just, I heard it was shit. How can you have an opinion? Yeah, yeah, you haven't yeah. watched it yet. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. At least yeah, totally. watch it and then say it's shit. I agree. I the people I mean? that, uh, out of curiosity because something was so shit. Like, curious, the Joker movie. Yeah. The Joker movie, everyone's like, oh, shit. 
But the people that have actually gone to see it, like, that's well, pretty good, actually. It's a, <laughs> they, they take a swing. It's crazy. It might not be the film you wanted it to be. Yeah. But it's an interesting fair departure. Play. Like, yeah. fair play. But please withhold your opinion on what is and isn't worth experiencing mm. in life until you fucking experienced it. Mm. You know? 100%. And I think the people who are most open to experiencing new things and throwing themselves into it wholeheartedly with every ounce of their energy and spirit are children and animals. And animals. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why, like, when I think about life, yeah. I, like, my favorite sentient beings, it goes children, animals, adult humans. <laughs> like, adult humans are the fucking worst. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But we also have, we hold all the cards. Mm -hmm. We could make the world amazing mm -hmm. and a joyful place for everybody, mm -hmm. but we just don't because we're selfish and we're negative. Yeah. And we're just horrible. Always getting in the way of your own future. Kids are the best. Yeah. Kids are the best because they don't have money, they don't have power, <clears throat> they don't have sex, they don't have any of these currencies. Mm. Their currency is love, yeah. emotion, and experience. Yeah, yeah. No That's religion, no race. It's just no, vibes. Yeah. And animals, <laughs> very similar. Animals, even more so. They're just like, what? Mm. Like they're living in the moment for real. Like they don't <laughs> even know. Like I put my dog in a in a in a lift. You know, we go to the second floor, and she's like. Oh, I love the world changing device. Like, I'm just <laughs> yeah. in another world yeah. now. Great. Living right <laughs> in the now. <laughs> She's like, cool, let's do this. Not even a question of I, I love running this. with my dog. She's just going, let's, yeah, why are we running? Let's do it. Let's go. Let's fucking get there. Come on. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> do you know what I mean? She no doesn't know thought. why she's running. Mindless. Love it. Brilliant. But mm. adults find it really difficult to tap into that. And I think creativity, to be an artist, is a really good way of doing it. Mm. And, um, that's why, like, when I think about the concept of success, it's so, it's so, it's so wide ranging for me. Mm. Like, people look at, you know, the, people will say to me, "Oh, do you remember that guy, that 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 rapper guy, or that comedian, or that that mm. writer, or whatever?" Like, it's so sad. They just they should have made it. They never really made it. I'm like, bro, I can tell you for a fact that guy, he lives off his art. He doesn't make a lot of money. Still mm. living in a shithole somewhere, mm. but he that's He's all he camper. does. Yeah. To me, that's a success. Yeah, yeah. If you could call yourself an artist and you genuinely don't do anything else, you don't stack shelves, Fuck you don't yeah. you made it, bro. It's, it's, like you it. made it. Yeah. People always say to me, When's the big thing? Like, when's the next big thing? Like, saw you in Star mm. Wars, when's the when's the big thing? Like, when's your yeah. movie? Like, dude, I don't know. And newsflash, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I wake up every day and do what the yeah. Fuck I want to do. And not have to worry. Create. And I'm, Just create. I don't have a lot of money, but I can feed my mm. kids. You'll know. You'll know when I have, I've totally lost my track, uh, my soul, and I don't know what success is anymore. When you see me on I'm a Celebrity, when you see me mm. on Strictly Come Dance, you know, like, ooh, like... Ooh. But he's getting the divorce is hitting hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the house is, the house is on the rock, you know. Yeah. Like and that for, beetle mustn't taste too good. Yeah, right now. That's a, <laughs> that kangaroo dick, yeah. man. You know, for me, it's like as long as the people that I'm responsible for are good, then I don't have to make a crazy decision. I don't have to go like I've got to be in this movie. I've got to do mm. this. I, this rap album has to hit like this. Mm. It's already a success. Mm. When I hugged everybody walking up to the stage, that album was already. That a was success. it done. In fact, the show was always going to be great anyway. Mm. No worries. Yeah, and it's hard, it is hard to maintain that mantra, but I, I, I have to remind myself of it mm. all the time. Success is completely and utterly, first of all, in the eye of the beholder. It's, it's down to you, mm. what, how you feel about yourself. <coughs> yeah. Outside opinions are completely irrelevant. The money that you're making is completely irrelevant. If you are doing the thing that you love and you do that every day, and you're able to keep that going, mm. you, mate, you're a fucking success. Blessed. Yeah. You're like, you Infinity. made it. Yeah. I always remember that. Do you remember that Sway lyric? It was so funny. He, 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 he addressed it directly in a, I can't remember what song it was. But it was like, someone says to him, like, he says, people will keep saying, like, um, bro, you made it. And he says, are you mad? What is it? <laughs> I always, that lyric always <laughs> stuck with me. What is it? And I know exactly what he means. We're like, what is it? That's like yeah, your yeah. opinion of spell what, it out, yeah. right? Like, well, yeah, what is what's it to it? you? What's it like to you? That's something totally different. Yeah. Like, I know guys who like 
they would never, like, it wouldn't be rude to me, but they would never consider me a success because the things that they have, that's their version of it. So, like, they'll go out and, uh, you know, I'll bump into them in the Hatton Garden and they're buying, like, some Something crazy nice, link yeah. for, like, 15 grand or yeah. something like that. And that's their way of, and then, like I say, I'm not hating, like, that's their way of going, I've made it. Whereas f for me, that no. it doesn't even touch the site. No. I just, I, no. that wouldn't mean anything to, to, to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally respect it. I'm just saying, like, that no, no, just no. lets you know everybody has different ideas of it. And whatever idea of it that you have in your head, if it makes you happy, if it brings you, brings you completion, then you made it. It's success. funny because you know I, I was, I drew immediately on you know our cigar moments, yeah. you know when we had some cigars and yeah. cut the beers, yeah. and, and there's that kind of real, it's a tone of sitting on the porch and reflection. And I think sometimes you you need those reflecting moments, to even conclude what you're you're saying with age and wisdom, you you kind of you you get a wider appreciation of what really counts and 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 how that should be celebrated mm. and what that actually what what even coming to those conclusions, you know, it yeah. takes time, doesn't it? It takes a lot of time. I think, you know, it's really difficult when you are the product. You are the product, Keller. You are, Killer Keller is the product, right? Mm -hmm. I, ha I have a business, you're running this place, you know, we have these entities, mm. but ultimately, it's not like, we're not at that stage where we can go, right, I'll just hire some no. guys and they can do it. Yeah, yeah. We're still we're the, the kind of, of the product. Yeah, 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 we are, we are yeah. still the kind of thing that needs to be bought and sold when you are the face of the product, a lot of ego and vanity is tied in with that. So mm. I have a lot of fear about growing old, about going bald, about getting fat, you know, about not looking like a, mm. a viable product anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think to get to that philosophical point that you, you were talking about, you have to start letting go of your ego and vanity. Mm. You just have to let it go. Mm. And, and, there's not many good things about getting old, but one of the great ones is letting go. Mm. Not like when you see those old guys, like this is the exact if I hope I live this long. You know, see those like eight year old guys just like, I'm wearing a three piece suit and a trilby every day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what? <laughs> like if you do that now, yeah. people will be like, Why are you why are you wearing that? And it's a constant question. It's like those old guys are just like <laughs> I could give me, a but... <laughs> fuck what you think, dude. I've been, I've been around the sun 80 yeah, years. Like. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think there's, there's a beautiful moment where you're like, yeah, I think it was probably that moment where I was like, oh, girls don't, they don't look at me anymore. No, no. Do you know what I yeah, mean? No, that's, Do you know that's when you like roll down the street like 21 and like the sun's out and you get a look from there, look yeah, from yeah, there, yeah, yeah, a little yeah, yeah. smile, maybe even chat to one girl like that you never even met before. You wake up one morning and you're like, oh, I'm not, I'm not a guy anymore. <laughs> it's true. Like a gorgeous girl comes up to you and you go, I still got it. She goes, so do you know how to get to, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm a direction guy. Yeah, yeah. No, Kels, that was just a smile. That was just a smile. It was it's like, and it's, it's a, flies are undone or something stupid, you know. Don't get angry about it and become some fucking mis misogynistic prick. Accept what it means. It's actually yeah. a beautiful thing. It means you've transitioned. You're mm. into this next stage mm. of life now where you have to bank on something other than your appearance. You have to yeah. bank on something other than like the mm. sh the shallowness of, 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 of vanity mm. and ego. What are you bringing to the table now? You have to think a bit deeper now, yeah. right? And that's an interesting challenge. And that's why like, I don't know for me, like with every uh, era that's gone by, decade that's gone by, I've never been attracted to, I know obviously they're incredibly gorgeous and their, their bodies are in incredible form or whatever, they're 21. I, I, I've always only ever been attracted to women my age because it's like, mm. who else could understand that? That's the yeah. sexiest thing yeah. possible yeah, yeah, yeah. that you go, oh right, like mm. I can't dine out on my looks anymore. I've got to have something else. Mm. And that's incredibly attractive to see a woman or whoever you're attracted to, men, women, who are just like, I don't give up. The sexiest guys mm -hmm. and the sexiest girls are always the ones that just like, wow, like, this guy looks like a fucking bum. How is he doing so well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because he's just like, he's zen with his shit. Or she's zen with her shit. Like, they just, they're yeah. just like... They're at peace with this everything. This is me, like, yeah. this is my body, but, like, you get to know me, like, I'm, I'm a fucking, I'm a legend. And you're like, 
that's why you're so sexy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Male yeah, or yeah. female, I'm talking here. It's the same. And it's even more intense for women because yeah. their looks are so heavily judged. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A man can be like cool in his mm. like 60s, 70s, silver box. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suave, I mean? yeah. Women are up against it with that shit. There's so much more prejudice and judgment against them. But the sexiest people mm. are able to just go, I've transcended that, mate. <sighs> of course I was hot when I was 21. Mm. Who wasn't? Yeah. I've got some other shit going on now. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, you've got to lose the vanity, you've got to lose the ego, and that really helps with the next chapter but also of being an artist and a human being. For sure, but also reap what you sow as well. The yeah. things that you do from the jump, mm. you know, they become the catalyst to, you know, expansion and new decision making. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you still hold close to what, you've created what though what, what morals are encompassed within that yeah just go back to the hip-hop side of yeah, things yeah. you know and you know we all want to we all want to win awards we all want recognition of our peers we all want to be celebrated by the people that we respect but i i think really what that is is a sort of mask of what deep down we really really want we want to be remembered because mm. The one thing we never address is death. We're not gonna be here. Mm -hmm. And you just wanna feel like someone's talking about you, someone remembers you. Like right. I, I watched this film when my kids were a bit younger called Coco. I don't know if you've seen it, it's yeah. a Pixar film. It's about, the, uh, it's about this Mexican kid. And it's, 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 it, it's, it's a beautiful film that's like a Pixar comedy that deals with death head on. <laughs> it's about the Mexican Day of the Dead and wow. how Mexicans deal with death yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. And this kid, in his family, what they do is they create sort of shrines of, of photographs, basically. And everybody has to have a story about this person. If you don't have a story about the person, the photos kind of disappear and no one remembers what the person looks like. <laughs> um, and a relative of his exists in this purgatory where people don't remember him, like his photos are blank. There's no stories about him. And you start to realize as the film goes on that he's a prick. Wow. Do you know what I mean? That's why, you know? Whoa. So you can focus on the awards and the accolades and, and you know, the money or whatever like that you think is, is the thing, but what are people gonna say when, mm. when you're gone, mm. you know? And like, I know weirdly that you lost a friend recently. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I know this because I was with someone who was going to meet you and then she was like oh actually he can't mm -hmm. meet you he's just mm -hmm. had a mm -hmm. bereavement mm -hmm. and I was like oh shit no, I should mes message him but then I was like oh, actually I don't even know who the dude is maybe I'll just, I'll just leave him to his thing and then I don't know if it was you or it might have been Harry Love who also knew him mm -hmm. posted a picture mm -hmm. I was like I fucking know that guy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but only from dog walking mm -hmm. like, we'd just walk our dogs in the same park and he always had a nice word to say. Mm -hmm. He's always like really friendly. Randomly, one time he, he was like, he introduced me to Matt Cardle, who mm -hmm. won X Factor, you know, wow. that singer. He goes, because he goes, oh, um, there's another dog walker. I think like, someone told me you do music. There's, a, there's, there's another dog walker who does music. He's a nice kid. And he introduced me to Matt Cardle. Wow. Anyway, he was a lovely dude. Yeah. Um, Rest in peace, Flash. Yeah. Sure. And Rest then I started to realize, oh my hero. God, he's connected to all these yeah. people. Yeah. But for me, it was just like a guy who walked his dog. The reason I bring it up is like, I don't know him. I don't. I don't know him outside of dog conversations, mm. smoking a rollie, mm. walking the dog, talking mm. shit. But the legacy that he's left in my head is one hundred percent positive. Mm. So that, like, that's that to me is it, that's an accolade on him. I yeah. can't imagine what it's like. People who knew him well, yeah, he was awesome. Family and friends and stuff like that. If that's what they're all saying, then he never dies. Mm. He never dies. The Emmy fucking rots, the BAFTA rots. Eventually, mm. it gets melted down, it gets sold, it gets stolen. Even the even your headstone fades or gets knocked over or vandalized. It's experience, personal. The stories, they, they never die. Yeah. So that's what we're all striving for deep down, but not we don't all realize it yet because it's a hard thing to take on board. And, it, and when you're young, you, why would no. it even cross your mind? No. You're never going to die when you're young, you know? Then you hit 30, then you hit 40. What's yeah. next? Like, then you hit 50. Like, your body starts to slow down. Like, yeah. death becomes real, but it's still too scary to... It's probably scarier, yeah. even, yeah. to... I think you can joke about it when you're yeah. young. You're like, yeah, 
like, mate, like if I make it to fifty, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be happy. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Tell, young. tell me again when you're forty nine yeah, 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 how yeah, happy yeah, yeah. you are to die next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, for real. It's scary, it's terrifying. Mm. Um, but it needs discussing and I think a lot of the best art actually reflects on it and, mm. and, and, and deals with it in some kind of way. Um, mm. And that is, that's kind of the job of the artist. We sacrifice our free time, our social time. Sometimes we sacrifice our relationships. Yeah. Sometimes we ruin relationships yeah. with loved ones Yeah. because this thing can be so all consuming. Yeah. But <laughs> it's like someone said at my sister's 40th, they had like a bunch of videos. And my sister's a novelist, you know. And they had a bunch of videos of people, you know, sending love, saying happy birthday. And one guy said something I always remember. He said, he said, Zadie, you're the most useless person I'd take into the apocalypse. <laughs> and I thought, that sums up <laughs> artists. Wow. That sums up an artist because we're not important yeah. at all. Like, we're not fucking heart surgeons. Yeah. But we are important. Like, yeah. we're super important. What an incredible Like, that's analogy. what we are. We're the most useless people to take into the apocalypse. Yeah. Because we can't do anything. We can't fly a helicopter. We can't save your life. No. But we sort of can. We can fly a helicopter. We can save your life. But it's like It's kind of Murdoch. Yeah. It's Murdoch, A team. Yeah. It's that kind of. What are you doing there? But you just, then you, you kind of get to be it. there. Yeah. Because we take the edge off everything. Yeah. We, we create escapism for ourselves and for others. We, we bring immeasurable joy to ourselves and others if, we do, if we're doing our jobs yeah, yeah. right. You know, I must say, not all artists are doing this, but like, that's the idea. And that can't be measured in any of like this, this sort of traditional sense. Whereas a heart surgeon, he's saved 476 yeah. lives with yeah, heart, yeah, heart yeah, transplants. Yeah. He's a fucking legend. We're not on that level, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it is measurable. What, what we do is, it's, it's can't really, you can't, can't really quite say quite. exactly, you can't put your finger on it. <sighs> Think of your favorite artists, whether they're writers, you know, Painters, singers, mm. actors, dancers, rappers. A lot of the time, it's it's like you you could sort of describe it and be really like journoy about it and say, well, it's because of his flow or it's because of her style, it's because of the mm. sleight of hand and the, the the brush strokes in the painting. But really, that's you know that's mm. dissecting the frog. You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. It's about how they make you feel. Yeah. And like, why is it when I'm going through the absolute worst thing in my life, I can play this song and it makes oh. me feel like things are going to be okay. Yeah. That's, that's what the artist brings, mm. you know? If, if A Love Is A Losing Game comes on my shuffle by Amy Winehouse, I have to stop everything mm. I'm doing, mm. no matter what I'm doing. I have to just stop. Mm. And it's like two and a half minutes. I get to the end, I'm just like, thank you. Thank you, mm. thank you, because it's it's like this transcendent thing. I feel her pain. I feel what she's going through, and she's going through it all for me. Mm. Mm. She doesn't fucking know me. Doesn't know who I exist. She's not even here anymore. But she does as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like you, your art means nothing until it's in the hands of these people. Wow. And it's it's you know it's being shared and. And and these strangers on the other side of the world are, are, are taking something from it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, we just lost Liam Payne. There are people like yeah. in Argentina, outside the <coughs> hotel he died <coughs> in, like, they felt a connect, like you can say what you like about One Direction, it's irrelevant. Pe people felt what they felt about his music, mm -hmm. just the same way I described that mm -hmm. Amy song. It's the same to them. It's mm. maybe not to me, but it's the same to them. Mm. It's, in, it's important. It's crazy, isn't you it? You know? And he'll, he'll, he'll never be forgotten because of, like, that connection between the thing that he did and the way that they felt about the it. Personal experience. Yeah. So oh. make sure your story's straight, man. And, like, the decisions that you make where you, like, that was a bad one. And actually, mm. I've let this person down or I've created some bad juju here. I've mm. created some bad karma. Straighten it out, man. Mm. Because tomorrow, you know, mm -hmm. you get hit by a bus, you never straightened it out. Mm -hmm. And that bad juju is like, everyone's like, oh, he lit up every room he was in. There's one guy going, I he didn't, didn't light up that room. He was a prick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to clear it. It's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just That's make sure your side of the street's tidy. So, one hell of a 
Jerry Springer sign off, there, my <laughs> friend. Wow. What's the, wow, what is the future, my brother? What's, uh, apart from the album? I don't know, Kels. I genuinely don't know. And I kind of like it that way. Sometimes mm. I get really stressed mm. looking at my diary and going, there's nothing the here. Mm. There's nothing here. How am I making this money? How am I getting my kids through university? Like, how the fuck am I doing this? Mm, mm. At the same time, there's this really cheeky, almost masochistic side of me that loves That's the it. fact yeah. that I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going to be at. <laughs> yeah. It's really childish and it's really immature, but I, I just love that there isn't a plan. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know when I'm getting paid. I don't know how I'm going to make the next pound. I'm going to have to hustle. Mm. I'm going to have to do something weird. I'm going to have to get out of my comfort love. zone. Yeah. It's like, I, there's a part of me, this is the, probably the thing that makes me a difficult friend sometimes or a difficult lover or a difficult husband or a difficult father. There's elements of chaos and drama that I just, I just love. Mm. I just love it. Because it's like a predictable life is a life only half lived, I think. Mm. I was speaking to my friend Jim about this beforehand and he was saying, you know, talking about missteps that he's made in life, but he feels like he's experienced as much as he possibly can so that when crazy shit happens, he goes, I actually got a reference point for this. <laughs> yeah. Like, Funny. Don't so worry, I, I, I might be able to solve this, guys. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I I thought, that's really interesting. Yeah. So it's like you're saying, always on the right path yeah, I'm not because of these go out things. And create chaos. I'm saying like, keep your eyes open to possibilities mm. because the more different varied shit you do the more useful a human being you might be mm. you know, know anyway. well my friend <laughs> we've been good through chat. a lot and it's always a pleasure to see you yeah, we always have same. a good deep one always a good chat some of the you know shenanigans we've got ourselves into <laughs> yeah. over the years my friend uh, crazy isn't it yeah. thinking back my brother Nice one, man. That's what B. Bailey Smith, <laughs> Doc Brown, come on. Uh, yeah, Street Culture Podcast. Thank you very much for joining us again. More next time. Big up yourselves. Take care. Easy. Easy.